this is one unique mission which is not being only looked upon or looked up to by India but by the entire world. America was the first to land on the surface of the moon in the year 1969 when Neil Armstrong landed there, had a stall around. But it was our Chandrayaan later on which went there and picked up the pictures of water. Chandrayaan 3 being looked up by the entire world also for the reason that this is a location chosen for its landing which has not been reached by any other mission. But every Indian will obviously feel proud about it and so do all of us. But I think more importantly from the scientific point of view, this is one unique mission which is not being only looked upon or looked up to by India but by the entire world. Because the record of the Chandrayaan series so far has been that the inputs, the pictures, the inferences provided by our Chandrayaan series are most of the times first of its kind, exclusive and they have been eye-opener. Like for example, and you, in spite of the fact that uh, some of these uh, nations have already reached the surface of the moon. America was the first to land on the surface of the moon in the year 1969 when Neil Armstrong landed there, had a stall around. But it was our Chandrayaan later on which went there and picked up the pictures of water and uh, awakened the world to the possibility of uh, a human habitat being possible there directly or indirectly, which was, you know, it's something which has been uh, always conjuring up our imagination, which has been stirring our imagination generation after generation. I mean, singing nursery rhymes on this, imagining how would moon look, how would be the people living on moon. But this has been a part of the mystique, part of the uh, imaginary fiction. But here, Chandrayaan, for once, gave us a reason to find answers to these questions, which even the rest of the world did not have such kind of. So there is a lot much exclusiveness. And even this time, Chandrayaan 3 being looked up by the entire world also for the reason that this is a location chosen for its landing which has not been reached by any other mission, namely the South Pole area, which is said to have even craters of water, which is said to have more avenues of experimenting with hydrogen, oxygen, etc. So I think the entire world is going to be benefited from the inferences that we draw from there. So now uh, the important uh, thing is, uh, fi final thing is softly and securely landing on the moon. For that lander has to separate from uh, the uh, propulsion module. So as of now, all the modules of propulsion system has made this functionalities. And uh, it has done its job. Now Vikram has to take its own course of action. For that it has to separate. So even after, after separating, then the major event comes. A major event is uh, uh, four uh, 800 Newton thrusters. They have to fire to take it to the lower orbit. They, that also will be done in two steps and uh, ensuring that all the three systems are working properly. These two steps it will go down, put 100 kilometer orbit, then from 100 to go to the uh, 30 kilometer orbit, 100 by 30 kilometer orbit. That's a very, very vital. But when it's going very closer, closer to the earth, so the position of the module has to be ascertained properly. So then uh, from the 30 kilometer onwards, how to move, how to thruster to fire, what orientation to fire, uh, whether how long it will reduce the velocity in the horizontal, then it has to composite vertical also, it has to vertical fall also it has to reduce. So that way a lot of maneuvers have to be done and while doing it, it has to make sure that it is going to the proper path. So already loaded uh, pictures of the lunar terrain will be there, it will check against that and try to identify the place where it is supposed to land, which is also supposed to have been already loaded in the system. So the, all these activities will be done by the lander. So the lander will start its real action uh, only uh, from today afternoon onwards.